This time on Sightseeing Spot Facts, we're taking a look at Neuschwanstein Castle, a fairy tale castle that has inspired countless fantasies, including Disney's Magic Kingdom Castle. It's located in the south of Germany, in the picturesque state of Bavaria, nestled on the foothills of the Alps at an altitude of over 900 meters. The castle's stunning location overlooking the surrounding countryside just adds to its magical allure. The castle was built over a 17-year period, from 1869 to 1886, and was commissioned by King Ludwig II of Bavaria, also known as the Fairy Tale King. To understand anything about this castle, you have to know about the king who built it as their stories are one and the same. Ludwig II became king at the young age of 18, after his father suddenly died. Growing up, he had spent a lot of his childhood in a castle further down the hill, with walls decorated in scenes from medieval legends, depicting knights, fair maidens and dragons. He became deeply drawn into this world. Later, he also became a huge admirer and friend of Richard Wagner, the great German composer. Wagner's romantic medieval operas only intensified his love of these legends, so much so that when he became king, he even supported him financially. He wanted to create a castle dedicated to his love of medieval legends and Wagner's operas. The king had hoped that Wagner would one day entertain him at his new castle, but sadly the great composer died before it was finished. The name Neuschwanstein Castle means New Swanstone Castle, but wasn't given that name until after the king's death. It's a reference to Wagner's opera Swan Knight and the Knights of Schwangau, the area in which the castle lies. It's even said that the king saw himself as one of the last surviving Schwangau knights. Because of this, he gets his other nickname, the Swan King. Building the castle also gave the king the opportunity to escape the capital, Munich, where, as a young, inexperienced king, he was treated more as a figurehead, with most of the decisions being made by his ministers. But when it came to his castle, he was a true ruler, in charge of a workforce of over 200 people. Inspecting every detail of the plans, he didn't take it lightly when things didn't go his way, and those who made mistakes soon found out. To come up with the blueprints that his architect and engineers could use, he hired German scenic painter and stage designer Christian Jank, to draw up the concept art that would become Neuschwanstein Castle. The castle is characterized by its use of towers, turrets, spires and decorative gables, creating a visually stunning ideal of what he thought a castle ought to be. Clad in white stone, quarried from the local area, it blends seamlessly into the surrounding area and hides its more modern construction. Despite its medieval appearance, Neuschwanstein Castle wasn't built like a traditional castle. It was built using modern materials and construction techniques for the time, such as bricks, cement, iron girders, as well as having a hot air heating system, battery-operated bells, and even a telephone. As well as the latest technical innovations of the late 19th century, the interior was to have 200 rooms, but only a handful were ever finished, such as the throne hall, the hall of singers, the drawing room, the study, the dining room and bedroom. Surprising as it may seem, the castle was largely meant for himself and his servants, and the rooms covered with murals served more as a monument to the culture of kings, knights and courtly love than any real practical purpose. Something you might not expect in a king's castle is a grotto, a grotto being a small cave near water. But Ludwig had an artificial grotto put in, with a waterfall and coloured lighting. 
he got the idea from one of Wagner's operas based on a German legend. Constructing a castle of this size and design in such a remote and high location was not cheap, but King Ludwig was impatient and would spare no cost. As the building continued, his debt spiraled out of control, yet he avoided using state funds, instead using his king's allowance and inheritance as well as taking out multiple loans. The situation and debt was becoming an embarrassment, and his government urged him to stop, but he wouldn't, and threatened that he might have to replace his ministers with new faces. The government decided to strike first, declaring him insane, as it was the only way they could remove him, even though it was legally a grey area. Put under house arrest near Lake Stromberg, the Mad King, as he also came to be known, was never to see his castle again, and a day later, after taking a walk with his psychiatrist along the lake, he and his psychiatrist died of drowning under mysterious conditions. He was just 40 years old, and to this day we don't know what really happened. The castle was never finished, but six weeks after his death, the castle opened to the paying public, something Ludwig II could never have imagined. In 1933, Hitler visited the castle, because he too, like Ludwig II, also loved the works of Wagner. Hitler also painted this watercolour of Neuschwanstein Castle when he was younger. During the Second World War, the castle's remote location was perfect for hiding stolen paintings and treasures. Safe from bombing, over 20,000 pieces of art stolen by the Nazis from France lay hidden here until 1945, when American soldiers found them. Since the end of the war, tourist numbers have increased year after year, and now one and a half million sightseers visit every year, driven here by the castle's magical beauty and the fascinating story of Ludwig II. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more.